I'm a doctor, and it happened to me what many doctors can't imagine. I have become sick, and I suffer from a chronic illness, which likely is difficult to cure. And the worst aspect of my illness is that doctors are convinced that this illness don't even exist. I'm a patient with CFS, and it changed dramatically the way how I practice medicine. My story starts in 1996. Before this time, I was a hard-working doctor and mother. Stress was part of my life as a neuropsychiatrist. And after the birth of my son, I was given a blood transfusion, which is likely cause of my illness. In 1996, my body began to sputter. I became increasingly tired. How much I slept, I could not get rested. A holiday of a month was not enough to recuperate. I even fell asleep during my consultation, and it could not go on like this. As a doctor, I know how to well, how difficult it is to discuss such kind of problems with your colleague. Professor de Merler was one doctor who take care of the fate of these patients, and he was the one who finally reached a diagnosis, chronic fatigue syndrome, something I had hardly heard of, but not knew much about. I stay at home for three years. I missed my work. I missed the feeling of being useful, but I used this time to immerse myself in the issue. The fatigue field became a new challenge with many stumbling, stumbling blocks. As a sick patient, I had to go to the National Health Service. The doctors there put me literally in my underwear. I feel often ashamed because I always had to convince them that I was not yet capable of work. As a patient, you struggle to accept your condition. You feel ashamed for your illness and also for the fact that you're there to apply for illness benefit. Controlling doctors are anything but understanding. They minimize your complaints and you will be viewed as someone who refused to work who don't want to get better. In 2000, I was able to return part-time to work. I was better, but I was not cured. I had to find a balance between rest and work. I suffer from disabling memory and concentration problems, which influence my daily practice. It's why I focus myself on CFS patients a population with few acute symptoms, and it allowed me to have an income. I stuck my neck out for this patient, and I was not spared by the civil service. The few doctors who dared to go against the official guidelines were, con were criticized and obstructed and convicted and afterwards suspended by the medical association. I had to go tr through this too. There is little support from the government and from the medical association for CFS patients. Doctors find these patients a burden and send them as soon as possible to a psychologist. The often heard voiced criticism they used to thwart my work was that I was not preferring the evidence-based guidelines, namely cognitive therapy and graded exercise a main therapy in many countries. This therapy was based on a UK pay study. After many years and a legal battle, it turned out that this study was based on fraud. Consequently, we lost a lot of time and thorough scientific research. In the meantime, the USA has changed its policy and considers CFS now as a biological disease. How many of you suffer occasionally from a vague complaint? Headache, back pain, dizziness, nausea? I expect often. How do you react to your situation when your complaint is affecting your functioning, daily functioning to such a degree that you were not able to work anymore? That is the situation that CFS patients are faced, forced to face. 
They were previous active patients who at one time in their life were forced to deal with a substantial loss of energy, pain and other symptoms and there is no real solution. Fain complaints are 95% of the work of a family doctor. The beginning of the therapy programming is very promising. He tries to link the complaint at the disease, diagnostic tests are performed and therapies are tried out. But when the complaint persists, when no markers are found, or when the therapeutic solutions decrease, likewise decrease the enthusiasm of the doctor. At this point, he starts to explain the symptom on a psychological base. The symptom is not medical valid anymore. The stress word is used for all kinds of symptoms who are not easy to explain. The neglecting attitude of the treating physician is taken over by the environment, which results again in re rejection. The continuous rejection is, plays a role in developing depression. At the university, specialists in medicine mean that you're a specialist in one function, one organ, one system. As long as a dysfunction is limited to one organ, Many options of involvement of therapy are possible. But at one time, the dysfunction don't belong anymore to one system, but to a network that spread over the body. And this is a more complex situation and need a more holistic approach. You need a doctor who is aware of more systems in the body and informed about the latest development in the in, in these fields. Think about a car with systems and subsystems. A car can only drive where all systems are set to each other and one is in, in charge for the whole functioning. Fortunately, there are positive signs on the future. We are 20 years later now and scientific research has confirming my approach once based on intuition and I got help. Professor Ron Davis, a geneticist at the Stanford University in uh, USA, a father of a son with CFS, with a severe form of CFS, has get, gathered around him many people from various disciplines, various disciplines, and has put himself the aim to elucidate the pathophysiology of the CFS, to find a marker and a solution, a therapeutic solution for his son. We arrive now at the most important part of my discourse, to find, to take, namely an attempt to find a solution. I focus my plan on fatigue, but you can focus it on uh, all kinds of symptoms. Thinking about all this, I came to the conclusion that a well-designed complaint clinic with a close connection to basic science could be a solution. The most important aim of such a clinic is to set up a therapy program based on the knowledge of today. A therapy program in all its facets, medical, psychological, physiotherapeutic, sociological, in collaboration with basic science. Currently, mainly GPs are confronted with these patients they send them for support to a specialist and the specialist sent the patient back with the news that everything is all right. Our clinic can be a link between the first and the second and third line and offer more solution. It can set up programs for, with the university for treatment and for research and with the government and the social sector for work uh, assessment and rehabilitation. And it can also set up programs for young doctors for training in holistic thinking. There will also a uh, number of problems. First is the financial problem. The uh, policy at this moment in medicine is very strongly evidence-based with pathways that doctors should follow. 
symptoms in symptoms the pathophysiology and the cause is often not known thus, thus you can't work evidence based another problem is the remuneration of doctors is there in the remuneration by performance and this uh, favors specialization our clinic is new and different and will difficult find financial support from the government Another problem is to find doctors who dare to explore the grey zone of medicine. A grey zone with many ideas, much to prove, but very interesting. Don't the doctors don't like to leave their comfort zone. And another problem is also to find an affiliation. I think affiliation with the university is the best option because all departments are there and they are knowledge of scientific research. Finally, I need the support of many people to, to set up such a clinic or to realize it. This challenge, and I mean giving a lecture and this way beyond my comfort zone, is my goal to realize it. Still one thing, complaints are not going away. If we can't find a solution, more and more people will suffer from it. Thank you.